Grew up a big Auburn fan. Cam Newton was a guy that I, you know, I wanted to be like. You know, we even had a package that year on our football team called the Cam Package. It was like the Wild Cam instead of like the Wild Cat. He got hurt his senior year in high school. I think I held him out for four weeks, four straight weeks. I finally let him play. You know, I, I came back, man. I had a knee brace on. They ran the pass play to OJ. He shakes a defender open down the middle of the field, catches the ball in between two guys, and he rips his jersey. I just let everybody know, you know, I'm super, I'm back, Superman. You know, Cam Newton did it. You know, I looked up to him, so, you know, I think I got a flag, but uh, it was just a little statement, you know, to let everybody know I was back. Tocqueville is about a uh, thousand folks, plus or minus, and it's spread out. It's a, it's a farming town, and so there's, there's lots of hardworking folks. It's kind of like everybody knows everybody. You don't have to worry. Everybody's looking out for each other. And you get to enjoy everybody knowing what you're doing. Now, at the same time, you come back and everybody knows what you're doing. You know, it's very, like, country, just not many lights, traffic lights in the Tocqueville area. Not any at all, just stop lights one caution light. It helps you growing up uh, in a place like this because you see everybody and how everybody can fit together and work as a small town. Everybody's uh, uh, part of a family. He liked to play. He, 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 he always wanted to go somewhere, play, be outside. I can just remember him as being a, a skinny little kid, you know, always running and jumping, playing sports. Uh, you know, he, he was a, a kid in a small town. There ain't a whole lot to do around here. Going outside and riding bikes, you know, just freeze tag, things like that growing up. You know, something that just kind of just stay out of trouble. I was kind of like an athletic kid, I guess, always around sports and just love watching TV and seeing athletes and like, I want to do that, I want to try that. When was sports not in play? <laughs> There's always been something going on. Baseball to basketball to football. I always played two sports at the same time my whole life. Playing football around like seven or six, around the same age as baseball. You know, I, I was pretty good at both. Baseball was his was his primary passion. He's always very passionate about baseball. He struggled a little bit at first because he always wanted to hit the home run. <laughs> it was home run or strikeout. You know, he could hit a baseball as far as you can see it. We played for state championship, several scouts there. He hit a foul ball. I don't know how long that ball stayed up in the air. I want to say eight, maybe nine seconds. The average major league pop-up is, is seven seconds. But he was very fast at that time. Anyone could tell that he was very talented. When you uh, were watching him play ball, you, you know, he stood out. No matter whether it was Little League or junior high and high school, I mean, you didn't have to look too hard to find him at that point. Eighth grade summer going into ninth, I'm, I moved to Proudwood High School. I'm training with the football team, and then uh, we get this call like that my housing got rezoned for a different location, and that I have to change schools. It was right before school started, you know, like a week before. I was uh, doing all the things at Proudwood High School, going against varsity guys in ninth grade, like shining, even talking to the varsity coaches about just moving up to, to see if I want to play receiver. So I was kind of upset about that because I had put in all the hard work at Proudwood High School the whole summer. And then all of a sudden it hit me with, I gotta leave. And it was just hard to hear that. Prattville was the powerhouse for football. I think they have 2,500, 3,000 students and we have maybe 300. We're talking about like a 6A, 3P ESPN games, ranking them one in the nation at a time. And uh, you know, I go to a school that's like a, a 1A. There's no way I'm gonna get recruited from this small school. I didn't wanna go. At first we were kind of not so excited or didn't know what, we were kind of skeptical about it. We actually, we thought about moving into the Prattville area, but OJ told us, he said, let's see how it play out. And it turned out pretty well. He was just a man among boys. It was funny almost. I watched him run a kickoff, you know, and I can just remember him breaking a couple tackles and Man, what, what grade is he in now? He was a freshman. Man, he's gonna be something. Really wasn't 
as serious on football yet at the time. I didn't really know how good I could be. You know, at Target Academy, you come across competition, but not like all the time. I was on the website all the time, looking at rivals. OJ wasn't highly ranked at first. So I said, okay, well, they, they got this linebacker ranked high, this safety ranked high at this point. I said, we're going to go to this camp where they at and see where you, where you stand. Probably was his 11th grade year when he really had, oh, like, OJ fans. We got to go see this, this kid at Otaga. And then that's when I noticed I could be good, and that's when I started to see the offers start coming. Like, and that's when I figured out, yeah, it's, it's pretty real deal when you got, like, Auburn, Alabama looking at you. You know, in the beginning, OJ was an Auburn fan, and he just was, you know, thinking he wanted to go to Auburn. Everybody in the house was Alabama fan except him. He was the Auburn fan. When Auburn won the national championship, and the newspaper clipping that came out with the national championship, he hung it on his door. And so we had to walk by that all the time, look at those Auburn pictures hanging up there. We gonna take them to both schools, and we not gonna just take them to Bama. We gonna take them to both schools, let him make the decision. It, it just felt like home here in Alabama, you know, the players, they were uh, always, you know, welcoming me and open arms as always a part of the team. And then, you know, as far as the dynasty here, playing for Nick Saban, you can't beat that. Folks that uh, knew him, Auburn fans, didn't matter. You know, Auburn, Alabama here in Alabama is what matters. But, you know, people didn't care. Uh, the folks in the town didn't care. They just wanted to watch him on the field because 88 was, was their guy here from Otago. He didn't have a whole lot of uh, catches throughout the year. But then, uh, you know, you see the evidence of his ability in those championship games. I cried the whole game. I mean, I just, I don't know. It was like, I just couldn't stop crying. I was so happy. When he had his first touchdown, I'm, I'm up there and I'm just trying to, you know, just celebrate, I'm crying. And so by the time I stopped, he scored another touchdown. I said, if he get another touchdown, he gonna bust my heart wide open and have a heart attack. Just to see my teammates kind of like, wow, like, that's amazing. Like, we should've been doing this all year. It, it was kind of emotional for me, man, because I knew that how hard I had worked all year long and to finally have that happen at the biggest game of the year was, was no better feeling than that. We're so proud of him, but he, he hadn't just started making us proud. We've been proud of him a long time. Sure enough, we had a parade and we had a fun day for the kids and he signed autographs. It kind of amazed me to see the number of people that turned out. You know, I, I don't think the town of Otago will have seen that many people. <laughs> you know, I mean, I was, I was just happy that I could be able to share with the people that it started with. When you can play at the highest level, but then you can still come back home, to stop in at the elementary school, you know, to read to the kids. You know, that that's saying something about your character. I mean, he just makes sure, he really just wants to make sure no one has a bad day if he's around. But that's him. They named the street in front of the school after OJ, and he was only there, you know, two, three years. But the amount of exposure that he's given to the area, I mean, it really deserves that. Uh, that's the least, I think, that, that we could do as a community is to put his name on something.